Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for LowPost.com and I'm back again with the last lesson in our Fusion Essential course. And in this lesson, I wanna talk about putting everything that we've learned together and to create a composite like you see on the screen in front of you. We're gonna take little tidbits of everything that we've learned through all the lessons up until this point to create this composite and the best part is, is that you're going to get the elements, not the footage, but the actual rampant design tools elements used in this lesson so you can follow along at home if you want to. Now, as always, I want to remind you, we value your feedback. So if you've got questions, you've got comments or suggestions for upcoming lessons or courses, I want you to head on over and post them in our forums at lowpost.com slash forums. All right, let's keep our intro short. We've got a lot to get to, so let's get started. All right, so let's Command or Alt and tab into DaVinci Resolve. And for our mini lesson, in our final lesson in our Fusion Fundamentals course, I wanted to talk a little bit about setting things up in our edit module, as opposed to getting all of our clips lined up inside of the Fusion module. We talked about that in a previous lesson. And sometimes, to be honest, you know, just because you can make dinosaurs doesn't mean that you should. Just because you can set things up inside of Fusion doesn't necessarily mean that you should. So we're going to do our setup right here within Resolve. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and pick one of our rampant design tools elements. It really doesn't matter which one. We'll just take the full one. I'm going to drag this and drop this down into my timeline. Let's just zoom back just a little bit so we can see the entire clip. And let's pick a few clips to work with from our Nike bin. I'm just going to increase the size of these shots just a little bit here so they're a little bit easier to see. And I think the shots that we're going to work with in this lesson will be our guy running here. Let's take him. Let's drop him in there. Let's take our woman standing there, sort of looking very, you know, victorious. She's just had a, you know, a big run. And you know, you'll notice that her clip is a lot shorter than the rampant design tools element that we're going to be working with. So we're actually going to take this and slow it down. And last but certainly not least, let's pick another one here. Let's pick... Let's take our guy running from the right hand side of the screen. We'll take him, drop him in. As you can see, again, this shot is a little bit too short. So let's get in, let's make some adjustments here. I'm just gonna take this shot, we'll crop it off so that it matches the duration of that rampant design tools element perfectly. We're going to take the shot of our woman standing after her run. We're gonna right click on that shot. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna pull things north just a little bit here just so we could see the menu when I do this. I'm gonna right click, there we go, perfect. I'm gonna come down to change clip speed. Now this clip is a lot shorter, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it down to a value of 33%. Now what I should have done as soon as I did that, and I didn't, is that once I punch in 33, instead of keeping that clip the duration that it is and just slowing the shot down, what I'm gonna do is just ripple the sequence down. Now keep in mind, I don't have anything actually in the timeline after this clip, so nothing's really gonna ripple. So you'll see, there we go, we'll just crop this off again like we just did. With this shot here, we could probably just adjust its speed by 30%. So let's come down to our clip speed. I'll just set this to be 66.666. The ripple sequence is still there, we'll change that, perfect. All right, so we now have our three shots all set to go. However, what's important to keep in mind is if we try to take these shots into fusion, they're not gonna be the time adjusted shots, they're just gonna be the regular shots we've already worked with. So let's fix that. What I'm gonna do with this first shot is right click, and we're gonna create a new fusion clip. And with that new fusion clip, let's find it in here. There we go, right down at the bottom. I'm gonna double click on it. So what we can do is once I click on it, we're now gonna type in guy running right. Okay, we're going to do the exact same thing with our woman looking victorious. I'll right click, we'll come to new fusion clip. Now I said to double click. Double click will obviously bring it up in the left viewer. We're simply going to single click on that fusion clip name and I'm going to call this woman for center. Okay, and last but certainly not least, now to be honest, I could use this as a fusion clip, but because I really didn't make a time adjustment, I don't need to, but just to keep with the whole process of what we're doing, I'll right click, we'll make another new fusion clip, we'll of course call this guy running left, okay? Perfect, all right, so I'm just gonna save where we're at right now and I'm ready to jump into fusion. Now, a couple ways that we could do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to set things up with our guy running from the left, let's make sure I use the correct delete key. There we go, perfect. 
Let's just delete these two shots because we'll bring them in once we get into Fusion. And with that shot selected, let's step into Fusion. Of course, we want to rename this node right away. We'll call it Guy Running on Left. And we're now ready to get in and set up this look. All right, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is I'm going to want to adjust the size of our runner because he's going to be a little bit small in the frame if I leave him the way that he is. So we'll call up a transform node. Let's take the size. Let's make an adjustment like such. Let's reposition him right about there. Looking very nice. Now, of course, he is going to be in the left panel. Let's take this node F2. We'll call it appropriately enough left panel. We'll say OK. Now, you might think that at this point we're going to take our left panel and we're going to put it to the input of the transform node's mask input, but we're actually not going to do that. One, because you'll see that it's going to require a little bit more work to set things up. And two, that if we were to take this and then add it to the guy running on the left, you'll notice that there's some weirdness going on with the positioning of this element and it's just really not doing what we want it to do. So what I'm going to do is just disconnect it there altogether. And I'm going to use a little bit of a different technique, one that I commonly use when I'm doing this type of task, and that is I'm going to use a great node that we haven't used up until this point called the Channel Booleans node. I'm going to hit the Shift and Space bar. There's Channel Booleans. Let's punch it in. Now that's Booleans plural, not Boolean, okay? Now you'll notice that it has a few inputs, but we're actually going to ignore all of those for right now. We're only going to deal with one input, and that is the mask input. Okay, so we're going to take the mask input and we're going to attach it to that left panel. Now you'll notice that with channel boolean selected on the right viewer, I don't notice anything, nothing has happened. Okay, now what is going on? Well, the reason that nothing's happening is right now I'm basically telling channel boolean just to pass everything through. You'll notice the operation is set to copy and it's sending the red, green, blue, and alpha channel straight through. Okay. What I'm going to do is instead of having the operation of copy, I'm going to change that operation to subtract. Now you'll notice that we're halfway there. Okay. Now we're halfway there with a bit of a problem. Obviously this is not cutting out what we want. We actually want this to be inverted. Now most people would think to themselves right away, well Kev, you know what we could do? We could take these elements, we could right click on them, we could come to clip attributes and we could say, well, you know what? Let's come down and let's just invert the mask element on all those clips. Perfect. There we go. It's awesome. I love it. Okay. Except for one problem. You'll notice now that if I preview any one of these nodes, it's actually giving me the inverted preview. So I can't actually see what any of these do. So unless you've specifically called these exactly what they are, there's no way to know what element these are unless you're constantly dragging them into the nodes window. What a pain in the butt, okay? Let's just right click. Let's put everything back the way we had it before. We're just gonna leave it as straight. We're gonna say okay, because all I'm gonna do is actually add an invert node in between the left panel and the channel booleans node. Now, where do I find this invert node? It's actually the channel booleans node again. What I'm going to do is just add channel booleans again right here in between the two nodes. And what we're going to do is we're going to set its operation to be negative. That's an invert effect. And you'll see, there we go right there. Boom. Done. Okay. Now what's cool about this technique, okay, is that once you've got it set up, you could copy these two nodes over and over again to create the same look. Now I'm just gonna zoom back a bit because we're gonna need a little bit of screen real estate to do the rest of the shots here. So let's go back to our Nike bin. Let's come down to our woman for center. We'll take her, we'll place her in here. F2, woman for center, okay. And of course the ramp and design tools element, we're gonna want the center element. There we go. Now you'll see this is why we didn't want to invert those because it could be a little bit of a pain in the butt. So we'll call this center panel. Okay, perfect. Now again, much like we had done before, I'm going to call her up on the right viewer. We're going to add a transform node. We're going to adjust its size. Now let's make sure we're actually viewing that transform node so we can see the size adjustment. Perfect. We'll reposition her up like right about there, I think. And let's now take channel booleans. I'm going to copy it. We're going to paste it down. We're going to attach transform to channel booleans. And we're going to attach our center panel to the input of the mask for channel booleans. There we go. Now, of course, we know, let's just reposition these here. 
that we do need that one other node. I'm going to copy this, we're going to paste it, and we're going to use that great shortcut we know about, shift on the keyboard, to add this node in between the two. And there is our woman who's just finished the big race now in the center panel. All right, let's now combine these two elements together, the two channel booleans nodes by simply grabbing and dragging from one node to the other, the connectors. And what we now have is these two elements now connected and ready to go. We'll just zoom back a little bit here. You can see how screen real estate becomes exceptionally important when you're working in Fusion. We can now move all of these down here. Very nice. And let's now get that last shot in here. We're going to come back to Nike. We're going to come all the way to the bottom. You'll notice a lot of this work is repetitive. Just getting things, dropping them in, naming them, copying nodes, pasting nodes. It's fairly straightforward once you wrap your head around it. Okay, I'm going to take our guy running from the right. Again, F2, guy, I'll just call this guy on right. Okay, And again, back to the rampant design tools elements. The element that we want is the right panel. There it is. Let's put the right panel in there. Let's get a transform node. There we go. Let's call it up on the right viewer. In this case, I don't think I need to do much other than position him because he's fairly large in the frame as it is. Now, we can make an adjustment to him after the fact, so let's not worry too much about that. Copy, paste, connect, transform to channel booleans. Call it up on the right viewer. We're now going to take media in. We're going to attach it to channel booleans like such. You'll see he's not quite where he needs to be, but don't worry. We'll adjust that in just a second because we're going to take this node. We're going to copy it. We're going to paste it. Hold shift and connect them together like such. And now we can get in and position him exactly where he needs to be for this shot to work the way that we want it to. Now all we're going to do, reposition these nodes here. We're now going to connect channel booleans to that merge node. And what we've now created is this element all coming together like such. Okay, now there's one thing that I do want to do. You'll notice that our guy here is a little bit outside of the frame. So I'm just going to adjust that transform node just a little bit here. Perfect. And to be honest, I think that needs just a down and dirty color correction. So let's do it. I'm going to add a brightness and contrast node after transform. We're going to adjust the lift a little bit, darken that up. We'll adjust the gain just a little bit here, and even just give it just the littlest bit of saturation. There we go. Perfect. Now, Command or Control and P to turn that node on and off. Now, again, this is not a color correction lesson. This is just a down and dirty. Let's make some adjustments to the color and the brightness and contrast of this shot just to spice it up just a little bit. Now, we could adjust the blue in this shot, but I think I'm okay with it. What I'm now going to do is come back to our edit module. I think I'm going to come back to our effects library. I'll just turn the media pool off. I'm going to come to our titles. I'm going to kind of come to Kev's cool title here. Let's drop it in there. Let's also just quickly give it a fade in and a fade out. And what's going to happen here is that Resolve is going to automatically render this timeline for us. And what we're going to have when it's done is a great little bumper for our lowpost.com Fusion Essential series made pretty quickly and pretty easily inside of Fusion. All right, so I hope this course has taught you a lot of things about Fusion, but most importantly, I hope it's taught you that it's an essential and valuable free tool if you work in Resolve that you can use to create very cool motion graphic composites very quickly and very easily. All right, our course is done, but the conversation has only just begun. We value your feedback. So what I want you to do is I want you to head on over to our forums at lowpost.com forums and post any questions, comments, or lesson requests you might have. And if you have any questions for me, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. Dot com.